Welcome back to our channel, Beyond Space Enthusiasts. Today, we're going to talk about China's new space station, the Heavenly Palace, and five interesting facts about it. It might take a bit of a heavy topic, but I promise you, it's worth sticking around for. Number 1. The Heavenly Paradise has three modules. I know what you are thinking. <laughs> Modules? Like multiple parts? How does that work? Well, I'm here to tell you. The Heavenly Palace is like a space station version of a Russian nesting doll with three different modules all stacked on top of each other. The first module is the core module, which serves as the main living and working area for the astronauts. It has all the amenities you would expect, like sleeping quarters, a gallery, and a toilet. But it also has some extra features, like a robot arm and a ducking port for spacecraft. The second module is the experimental module, also known as the Heavenly Eye. This is where all the scientific experiments and the research will take place. It's packed with state-of-the-art equipment like a high-resolution camera and a cosmic ray detector to help scientists study the effects of space on various materials and organisms. And finally, the third module is the resource module, which serves as the power and propulsion system for the entire space station. It's equipped with solar panels and fuel cells to provide electricity and propulsion propulsion for the space station. These three modules work together to make the Heavenly Palace a fully functional space station capable of supporting long-term human habitation and a variety of scientific research and experimentation. The core module ensures that the astronauts have a comfortable living environment, while the experimental module helps them to conduct scientific research and experiments. And the resource module makes sure that the entire space station is powered and can move through space. It's like a mini city in space. And while the ISS does have more modules than the Heavenly Palace, it's worth noting that the ISS is a collaboration between 15 different countries. China's ability to independently design and build a space station with three modules is an impressive feat. Number 2. China is not a member of the ISS. You see, China is not a member of the International Space Station. And the reason for that is something called the Wolf Amendment. Running our brains over this, we come to know that the Wolf Amendment is a provision in the United States federal law that prohibits NASA from cooperating with China or any Chinese-owned companies on any space-related activities. This this means that China was not able to participate in the International Space Station program, which is a collaboration between 15 countries, including the United States. Now, <laughs> okay, that's all well and good, but what does this have to do with the Heavenly Palace? Well, the fact that China was not able to participate in the ISS program had serious implications for US interests. It could seriously threaten the United States' primacy in space affairs and its geopolitical interests. It forced China to go alone and build its own space station, the Heavenly Palace. And while some may see this as a disadvantage, the Chinese government saw it as an opportunity. An opportunity to build their own space station and make it even better. This has led to the emergence of two major space stations in the world, the ISS and the Heavenly Palace, both with their own unique capabilities and features. But this also raises the question of whether this division in space exploration is beneficial for the global community or not. It's a topic worth pondering upon. Number 3. The Heavenly Paradise is a fraction of the International Space Station. How does it stack up to the International Space Station? Mm hmm let me tell you. It's like comparing a compact car to a luxury SUV. Now, you might be thinking, 
Wait, the ISS is huge! How can the Heavenly Palace even compare? Just to give you a bit of perspective, the ISS is about the size of a football field, while the Heavenly Palace is about the size of a small apartment. The ISS has a pressurized volume of 32,333 cubic feet, while the Heavenly Palace has a pressurized volume of just 3,696 cubic feet. Okay, but surely the ISS has more capabilities and functions. And while that's true, it's worth noting that the ISS is a collaboration between 15 different countries. China's ability to independently design and build a space station that's a fraction of the size of the ISS, as mentioned before, is an impressive feat. But don't let the size fool you. The Heavenly Palace is still packed with capabilities and functions. It's designed to support long-term human habitation and a variety of scientific research and experimentation. It has three modules, the Core Module, the Experimental Module, and the Research Module, each with its own specific functions and capabilities. Number 4 a stepping stone to China's larger space ambitions. China's larger space ambitions. It's like a space-faring version of the Karate Kid, where the Heavenly Palace is the wax on, wax off of China's space program. The Chinese government has big plans for the future of its space program. They want to establish a permanent crewed presence on the moon, conduct research on Mars, and even and build a space-based solar power station. And the Heavenly Palace is the perfect stepping stone to achieving these goals. It's designed to support long-term human habitation, which is crucial for any mission beyond Earth's orbit. It's equipped with a variety of scientific research and experimentation equipment that will be invaluable for studying the Moon and Mars. And it's powered by both solar panels and fuel cells, which are key technologies for a space-based solar power station. But it's not just about achieving these specific goals. The Heavenly Palace is also helping China to develop the technology, infrastructure, and personnel needed for a more ambitious space program. It's helping China to build a more robust space industry and to develop a more capable space workforce. Number 5. Tiangong will have a companion in orbit. The Shunqian Space Telescope is a planned space observatory that will be placed in orbit alongside the Heavenly Palace. It will be able to observe deep space with high resolution and sensitivity and will be used for studying astronomical objects such as stars, galaxies, and black holes. The interesting thing to note here is that the Shunqian will co-orbit with the Heavenly Palace with a scarcely distinguishable orbital stage. This means that the two will be in the same general area of space, but will be moving at slightly different speeds and directions. This is a big deal, because it allows the telescope to have a stable platform to observe the cosmos, and it also allows the telescope to use the Heavenly Palace as a relay station to the transmit data back to Earth. It's a symbiotic relationship that allows for more efficient and effective space observation. This partnership also highlights China's ambitious plans for space exploration and the importance of international collaboration in space research. It's exciting to think about all the new discoveries and advancements that will come from this partnership. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're feeling adventurous, why not go to the comment section and share with us your thoughts on the topic we just discussed.